Hi, Shelto. First of all, congratulations. The film um, took out the number one spot in the US box office this weekend. Good. That's good. That's Always good. money people will be happy. So I want to talk to you about your character, Kruger. Mm -hmm. In the landscape of cinema, there are bad guys and then there are bad guys. Mm -hmm. And Kruger is the latter. Okay, good. <laughs> good. That's what I was going for. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing that got me was that you did it. You pulled it off so well. But you, Shalto, are such a likeable guy. <laughs> So there's this just. You hear that, Matt? Damon, can you hear that? I'm just telling him in the next door room. He's so likable. But you pull off this, like, uber bad guy. I, I sort of have that line of whether or not a character is willing to hurt women and children. Yeah. And you do both. <laughs> but you do it with a yeah, It's funny. That was the part that really got me, to be honest. Like, because people were asking me, you know, was it more fun to be a villain than, than you know, because actors often say it is more fun. And it wasn't for me in this case because I was having to tap a little bit more of a negative or a lot more of a negative side than I would normally in my life. And you know, playing a character like Murdoch or something, I'm taking a lot of the energy and it's just, it's light and fun and kind of going outwards. Um, this was taking that same energy but sort of bottling it up and taking it in a negative way. And I really did find those, like exactly what you just said, like any time that it was like sort of intimidating a woman or a child or something like that, I was like, mm, I don't know man, I'm starting to go into a place that I, I don't really want to visit too many times in my life. I mean, I really do feel like I become somebody else, I know, however that sounds, you know, whether it makes me sound crazy or whatever it is, I am tapping into something. And uh, in this case, you know, real South African stereotypes from military, from, you know, the accent coming from a certain place. So it does, it does sort of take you into that. I did actually a lot more sort of humorous stuff with the character because Neil and I were never sure exactly how funny, darkly, satirically sort of funny we could make him. Um, and in the end, you know, he's ended up being sort of the more ruthless version. So it made it a little easier doing stuff that was like on each take I'd do something different and sometimes it might be something funny and we would crack up and the kid would crack up and Elise would crack up, you know. So it made the process a little more um, easy to, to sort of handle. But you have on-screen competition in terms of the villain with Jodie Foster yeah. who plays, she does good bitch. She, she does. She does. She's Doesn't done it she? before she does. in yeah, the Inside yeah. Man, but she does good bitch. Yeah, she does, man. She's intimidating. Yeah, yeah. but you don't have a lot of on-screen time with her. No. You're always separate and on the yeah. phone. So how did that work? I just savoured the scene that I did have. Like you were saying, it was a competition, you know, and, and one of us wins, I'm just saying. <laughs> Talk to me about wearing the exoskeleton, because obviously Matt wears one and you mm -hmm. do for a, mm -hmm. a, a time as well. Mm -hmm. Did that affect the fight sequences? Do you have to go through special training? It just, it made us have to be very aware when we were doing the sequences, because typically in suits like that, you might end up choreographing, you know, with a scene where, you know, when I hit you, you fly miles across the room and, and that sort of thing. But we had a very little bit of that, but most of the time it was very close quarter, sort of wrestling things, you know, of rough and ready sort of fighting style, street style almost. So we had to make sure not to clip each other by mistake with these extra metal pieces that were coming off. But other than that, it was okay. Sitting here talking to you, your accent makes me so happy. <laughs> oh, well, thank you very much. <laughs> Do people ever stop you in the street and ask you to say effing prawns? They do. Yeah. It's, it's funny that you ask that because it hap it, it, it's happened to me a few times. It's actually twice now, but the first time a woman actually stopped me at random and I was just walking down the street and she didn't, she just grabbed my shoulder and I turned around and she didn't even say like, hello or anything like that. She just looked at me and she's like, call me a fucking prawn. <laughs> and I was like, just like walking down the street and I, I, I was very uncomfortable and I'm like, I, that's a little bit weird. And she's like, please, please. Yeah. So I did it. You know, I was like, you're a fucking prawn, you know, and she's like, ah! <laughs> and sort of went off and it's just like this is weird it's, yeah. <laughs> it's not what I imagined it would be like to yeah. be recognised yeah. you probably have to suffer the legacy of other South African mm. characters Do, does anyone ever ask you to say diplomatic immunities uh, no I learnt a new term though hanging out with Matt it's cinematic immunity oh okay it's when you know things that would affect normal people don't affect you because you're sort of famous how do you rate his south african accent it's very good actually yep. very good okay. yeah he would he was he would he would um make fun of me on the on the film like sometimes i was telling someone earlier i was getting ready for a scene and i hear in the background i was about to intimidate him and i hear it's the sweetie man coming and it's matt like ripping me off i'm like is matt damon doing lines from my film you know and just like messing with me it was it was a lot of fun elysium opens nationwide august 15 so check out our review and remember like it follow it right here at switch